Live. Hello, everybody. I am back again. You must be sick of me. Someone's not sick of me. There's three people watching in. Alrighty. Hello, Karen. How are you, sweetheart? I'm having peanuts. My after lunch snack. Because that's a thing. Alright. So welcome back to Hello Annalise, Monica. Everybody's here. The whole gang's here. How exciting. And now, of course. I've got peanuts stuck in my teeth. Bless. All right, so this afternoon, um, as part of the Great International Craft Show number 11, uh, I am having a bit of a play today with some stamps, dies, and stencils. And I am, I've got those on 15% discount for today, which is such a huge bargain for you guys. And I thought I would have a bit of a play today with some new products that I've just got in and have a bit of a play with uh, showing you how to do some stamping and bits and pieces. Now, earlier on today, oh, and I've got 15% off Christmassy things too, so don't forget that. Earlier today, in my previous Facebook, I did a little bit of stamping and or a bit of stenciling with the Altenew, oh my god my words sorry the pink fresh layered stencil and I want to stamp the image over the top so that it looks like this and I thought oh I'll do that as soon as I get off camera and I went no I'll just quickly whip it up now so if you want to know how I've created this layered little number here just uh, go back and watch the previous video and I will be able to show you how that works. So I'm going to use my stamp press because that is the, the best way to get the image perfectly lined up. So the stamp press is great because it does allow you to stamp again and again and again and line everything up where you want it to be. And that's super important. Hello, Michelle Pentland. Hello, Linny Simpson. Right, so the stamp is great. It ha has, it's all one piece. So, I have to stand up to do this. So, I'm going to line it up. over the top of my stenciling. And this is just where you take just a second to go, you know, not rush it, just get it done. And then I'm going to use my Distress Archival Black Ink from Timmy Holtz, Mr. Holtz. And I'm going to stamp onto here. Sorry, you do get a bit of reflection with the stamp press, so. Now, this is the one that I used yesterday and I inked it yesterday, so it should be nice and juicy. So the cool thing about the stamp press is that I can go over it a couple of times as well because I have missed a bit, as you can see. All of a sudden, I've got no room on my desk. So I'm focusing on getting just this bit here right first. And the magnet holds it in place, which is really the key. That's better. The key to making sure that it comes out perfect, okay? All right, there we go. Hello, Susan. 
There we go. And you can see that that's lined up. Um, when are you getting the gold and silver permanent egg pads in? Um, Monica's just asking the question, what brand are you after, sweetheart? Which particular, which particular brand in the gold and silver permanent ink? There's a heap of different ones on the market. I will probably have to, uh, I can order some in for you but it's not something I normally have in stock. All right, so there we go. That is the Pink Fresh stamp over the top of the layered butterfly, and I really love that. So it's super easy to do, but the stamp press has got, is what's making it work so easy for me. So what I thought I might do today is whip up a few little, oh, those ones. Um, Tim Holtz doesn't do a gold or a silver in this um and i don't recall ranger doing a gold or a silver in this either but i'll look into it leave it with me there's all of the chance that i'm wrong um so yeah i thought i would have a bit of a play i'm going to make a couple of quick cards uh i've got some stamps here that uh are just absolutely gorgeous and i'm going to do a an everyday card and I'm going to do a Christmas card. And I thought I would do this one in maybe watercolours. I don't know. I'll do a couple. So these are from Woodware. These are a, a fantastic, fantastic brand that have got these super cool designs. Um, creative expressions make them. Um, so here are some that I have done with watercolours. So if you love something that's a little bit bright and a little bit punchy, um, then then this is the this is the go-to. So these have been done with watercolours. So here's some I prepared earlier, and this was actually a card class that we did back here in the Super Studio some time ago. And this is on watercolour paper, so they're great. So stamps are 15% off. So I thought I would just quickly do a, um, a nice bright card using watercolours. And I think I might use... The butterflies. Alright. Let's do this. So what I do when I'm using my stamp press is I line up exactly where I want it to go just by securing, putting my paper on, securing it down to the um, back with the magnet. Oh, come here. Peeling off my image and then I can layer up my image wherever I want it to go on here, just like that. Now this is a brand new stamp, hasn't been used before. So it's going to be a little sticky. So now when I close that plastic lid down, it's going to stick. So there we go. So now I can just put my ink on here, close that flap, and there we go. Right, so I'm going to stamp again in the black distress, black soot distress. So the difference between the black soot and the jet black is that this is a blacker black. It's a different based black. And of course the um, stamp press will enable me, because I've messed that up, to go back and now re-stamp. So I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm gonna do the top, give it a nice juicy, juicy ink and a bit more pressure. That's better. And now I'll do the bottom. And do the same thing. And I'm giving it a nice, I'm pushing it, I'm making sure I'm getting it right in the middle because I noticed that that's where my weak spot was. All right, so that's actually stamped up quite nicely. 
and then I'm going to pop that back onto the backing board so that it stays all together. Okay, rightio, so there we go. I'm going to pop that aside for later on. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to colour that. Um, actually, you know what? While I've got my stamp press out, I might stamp a few others. So I'll pop that one aside and do a little something else. All right. So we've got some fantastic stamps in from Hero Arts. Hero Arts have been around for years and years and years. And they are really, really they're excellent quality. They're a tried and tested company. They've been around for so long. They're so good. So we've got some, um, so these are stamp and die bundles. So this has got the super cute little bird's house with the matching cutting die. And that is called Robin's Chris, Christmas Robin's Bundle. This one is, um, is my favorite. I really love this one. This one is Happy Holly Days Berries Bundle, and it has the matching die with it as well. And then this is the, these are the Christmas decorations, the ornaments bundle, which also have the matching die set with them as well, so you don't have to fussy cut those. And then there's this little baby, and this one is called the Christmas Rose, and this is super pretty. Um, I really love that one. But I think today I'm going to use, I might use this one here. I love this holly, holly look. So I'm going to take it out of my packet. I'm not going to do the die cutting today because I haven't got my machine set up ready to go. But stamps and dies and stencils are all 15% off for today. Today only. All right. So I think that I might off stamp it. I might do it so that it goes a bit here. Across my image. So I'm using an archival ink and of course an archival ink because I'm going to be coloring it with water based products. I'm not going to be I'm not going to use Copic markers, but I'm going to use water-based products. So either a, um, either use watercolors or I might use the new Catherine Pooler colors, uh, or I might use Distress Oxides. But the idea is that it gives me the, the ability to keep a nice, a nice solid image. And that's super important. I want a nice solid image. Now I'm going to turn it upside down about there. Let's, I'm not going to drop it down. I'm just going to have a quick look and go, oh, I need to come down a bit more. About there. Put my magnet on it so it doesn't move. And I do sell the um, extra magnets as well. If yours break or yours um, get lost or get stuck to something or you need some extras, these little babies here are only $4. So that looks very cool. I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to position it differently this time. flip it because I dropped it on there so when I make cards I'm a person who makes card fronts I make these great little panels that I can then stick onto whatever background I like so I can turn it into a tag or I can turn it into you know I can mount it on a piece of colored cardstock so it's double mounted I like to give myself options. I really enjoy doing that, okay? 
So I've just stamped that little baby off to the side and that's a nice crisp image. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna pop that aside until I need it. Um, actually, here we go. Let's do some more stamping as well. So this is one of my Natalie May scrapbooking designs. This is something that I have hand-drawn, one of my little hand-drawn designs. And this is, it can be a hanging flower. I'm gonna do a little stamping and have it as a hanging design. And my stamps, when you buy them, come in one big solid piece that you need to then grab some scissors and cut around. Um, I love red rubber. I am a huge fan of red rubber stamps. Um, and am I getting, so I'm just reading the comments at the same time here. So the red rubber stamp, um, and I do love them. They've always been my favorite. Um, Karen, are you getting that one made up nap? What is that, babe? What in particular are you referring to? Sorry, I get a delay here and I only glance up at the screen every now and again. So this one here, I'm leaving a little bit short because I'm going to draw those long stems. Oh, okay. Um, the Buds of May is sold out. Yes, we are getting that one again. In fact, it is currently in production. So um, Louise will jump online now and just see if it is available online. I do believe it actually is, sweetheart. Yeah, I put it up this morning. She said she Lou popped it up this morning. And then I've also got this one, which is like the succulents. And again, you can tell that they are hand-drawn. I'm going to pop that one in the middle. Hand-drawn by me and then turned into red rubber stamps. Okay, so they are available online again, sweetheart. We have had that one remade. So you can pop that in your cart. But I do love red rubber and I think that that's really, really important um, as well to have a good quality product. So there we go. There's that one. And then I'm going to... Pop. Let's leave that there. I'm going to pop it off on the side like that. And then position that one just a little lower down there. So taking a second, you know, spend an afternoon doing a little stamping um, is fun. But I certainly recommend investing in a stamp, um, some sort of stamp press. I've got a, I've got one particular brand online that is a, has got a really great price point, and that's really important as well. So. Um, something that's suitable for everyone's budgets. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about colour. So I have stamped my, and I'm going to cut the bottom off of that because I've messed that up. That's okay. This one I'm going to have as my hanging, hanging um, flowers. I've got a couple of Christmas cards here. And so we've got one that's right um, off on the side. Then this one we've done there. And then I've got the butterflies. So let's do the butterflies first. What am I going to use? I'm going to use the new Catherine Paula inks. And I've got a tear off paint palette here. Normally I would use my glass mat, but because of the light reflection, I'm not going to do that. I've got a piece of paper towel handy and I'm going to whip through this quick sticks. Whoops. Okay, so... These are gorgeous. I used them in the last video. I stamped them. I stenciled using them on here. Can you check out how vibrant they are? That is where I have swatched the colours. So what I thought I might do is use them like watercolours this time. Okay. And I've spilt water already. I'm off to a good start. <laughs> I've got a paintbrush here. Um, and I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to 
do this. I'm going to go, right, there we go. Grab it, activate it with a little water, and then get that on there. Now, I have not stamped on watercolour paper. I have stamped on the paper that is available in the 10 pack of cards that I sell online. So it's a really nice heavyweight card. And that is what I use to make, that's what I use to make cards out of and my card fronts. And then I fold, I, I sell them as A5s, fold them in half and then we'll go back and you know, trim any or whatever I need to do. But I do love this cardstock. It feels really, really good. So that is that colour there. Activated with water. Looks pretty good. Um, let's go with Aquatini. Oops. Oh, well, there we go. That's juicy. And these, these ink pads are just divine. They are lovely and squishy. And they feel really, really nice. Now, when we are watercolouring, I'm not all about perfection, okay? Which is okay for me because I'm happy with that. If you are all about perfection and you like to make sure that you colour in every single little bit, knock yourself out. But I like that, um, that looser watercolour feel. I think that that's work, something that works for me. Um, I could also use you know, distress oxides to do this, but I just wanted to use these. Oh, so nice. These new inks. Um, I'm just gonna grab a baby wipe and wipe a little of that off. Look at that, just wipes away. And that's because it's one of these tear off palettes. Um, so I also mentioned in the last live uh, Facebook and earlier on, I did a Facebook post today, just saying that we've got a couple of other things on special. So we've got some great bundles available. So what the bundles are for is to, the bundles are, are fantastic for, um, they are, oh, sorry, the bundles are fantastic because they will, um, they are great value for money and they're like 30% off. So if you want to stock up on your adhesives, go for it. Um, Chrissy's just asked the question, are they water-based or are they dye-based? So let's read the destructions on here, which are all conveniently in the back of the packet. So they, uh, they're water reactive, which means you that they're water based. Okay, simple as that. And they, they don't dry super, super quick, which means you can use them for embossing as well. Um, I, I, we've got four different color sets and they are just everything. They are so, so good. I'm just going to pop a little yellow in here for the middle of these flowers. Um, by not going to the edges, it gives the, the, the project a little bit more life because, because white gives dimension. So, oh, look at that purple. Goodness me. White gives dimension. White gives it a real pop. So my little flowers in here. And I am using a, a thinner sort of brush. As most of you know, I, um, I've been, you know, collect, I collect paint brushes like most people collect handbags and shoes, but that's okay. Oh, look at that orange. Oh, now I don't know what bit I'm going to do in orange, but I could just work on the background so I can completely colour my background using this beautiful tutti frutti. And it's and it's going to look great. So then I can cut this out. I can mat it on a piece of cardstock. I can turn it into a card, and it is done perfect for a little girl's birthday. Um, kind of relaxing. You could do birthday invitations with this stamp actually. And there's a whole heap of other ones. So like the rainbow stamp is, um, where's the rainbow? Here we go. You know, the rainbow stamp is just divine. So these are, the brand is called Woodware. So if you jump onto nataliemay.com.au and do a search for woodware stamps, these guys will come up. 
in the uh, in your search so they're really really pretty and 15% makes them super inexpensive as well so there we go um, and let's put some of this one on this side as well so just using my tear off paint palette and the tear off paint palette for anybody who has never used one before is fantastic because it gives you a surface that you can that you can add paint or liquid or watercolors or ink like this if you don't have a Tim Holtz glass mat or a surface that you can stamp onto. Um, I do, I've got a couple of like messy mats that I like to use um, and we have quite a, quite a few in the tools section online so um, you'll be able to have a bit of a look if you want something a little bit more of a permanent option. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly dab this into here. Let's not overthink it. I haven't painted the leaves in green, but I don't wanna to spend too much time fluffing around. Um, all right, hang on a minute. Let me just, oops, there we go. So there you go. So you can see how they kind of look cool. Nice and bright colors, they look fantastic. Love those. Love those, love those. All right, so I'm just going to pop that aside to dry. So that's just using inks that I would stamp with. Oh, look, I made a pretty baby wipe. Um, and super easy to use. Radio done. Going to pop those aside and jump on to the next one. Watercolours are probably some of my favourite things to use uh, after Lindy's Magicals. Um, so what I want to do is I want to colour my i might do this one with watercolors so we've got lots of different watercolors available online we've got this fantastic little travel set by um ganzai tambi and this has got the these are like a super awesome brand by the way um that is just the perfect little set it's got a a pen in it it's got a water brush in it and it's got your primary colors it's got some secondary colors in it it's got a lovely lovely ivory and these are super pigmented these are the bees knees really really easy um the other ones that we have online we've got some art by marlene ones we've got the whimsy and bright set and the bold and bright and the colors are different in both sets and they come in this super cute little tin um just like that and they're quite thick heavy um, pans but the colors are gorgeous but not as pigmented they're more of a crafter's range rather than an artist range um the sparkly bright Colours from Art by Marlene are the other ones. So this is a set of massive big pans and these all have like a shimmer to them. Okay, so they are also really, really nice. The ones that I love to use are the Altenew ones. I also have a set of Ganzai Tambis, which are the other um, big brand that I use a lot as well. So this is the... This is one set. This is the other set. I was using this one yesterday. Um, and I'm going to just crack into it and start colouring. So what I like to do is I get my water spray and I activate them first. So that I'm not working with the dry pan. The other thing that, as you can see, that I do a lot is I use this section. But today I'm going to be using my tear-off palette. So I'm going to colour my, my leaves first and what I like to do is I make this nice and juicy and then I lift my colour from this puddle. So if I've got a few different greens here, I'm going to be mixing my greens together. Of course, holly is, well, leaves are not just all one colour. So there's no reason why you can't mix a couple of different colours together. A couple of different shades of green is, is going to work really well. Um, having some paper towel handy is great because I can take off any excess liquid off my brush. And this is quite a well, put I'm, I'm making quite a nice juicy puddle. I'm really quite getting in there, making it very, very quite wet actually. 
Um, and that's okay because what's going to happen is the water is going to evaporate and it's going to leave the colour sitting on top. Um, I'm not using enough that it's going to drip off and run everywhere. And that's fine. And that is enough of that colour. So now I'm just wetting my brush and it's done. Okay, Karen, can you just repeat that question? Are there different colours in each set? What is that for? Different colours of what in particular? Sorry, when I glance up, you know how there's that awesome 20 second delay. I'm just using a different green now on these bits. Yeah, I know, Lou, but would you set of what, darling? The paints? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Or the inks, or the Catherine Paula inks. Which ones do you mean, babes? Oh, right. Have you used several? So she has a main name. Oh, okay. Oh, the alternate paints. Okay. So they are different colours to those. Oh, yeah. They are different colours. That's why I've got both open. Um, this set here, they are actually, they've got a slightly, be oh, bugger, slightly better pigment to them. They are a slightly, they've got a higher price point, but they are a... They're leather. They're, yeah, exactly. There's your leather handbag, there's your vinyl handbag. Okay, they both do the same thing. They both work exactly the same. One's are just a different quality... One's more pigmented than the other. Sorry, babe. Um, so I'm just going to put that aside to dry. I don't want to do the brown of the stem just yet because when it's wet and if it all runs together, so you see how my, my red ran into the green? That's because I didn't let it kind of dry in between. Normally, I would just let that dry. So I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. And I'm going to do the, I'm going to use these ones to do this side. So I'm going to go with slightly different greens. You know what? They do the same thing, but it just comes down to your budget. How much you want to actually spend on something that's going to look fantastic. Um, I've had watercolours for years and of course, just like everybody else, I started out with some with a lower price point. And the minute I opened up a set that were the $130 ones, for example, massive difference in quality. I can tell you right now, huge, huge difference in quality. And I noticed that immediately. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to have a drink. So yes, it comes down to your budget. Um, the the end, end result might look the same. It just, it comes down to you as a creative, as a creative person. Okay, so I use these a lot for... I use watercolours a lot for doing cards. I especially love using them for for colouring images for cards and stamped images. I do that so much. Um, I really do enjoy that. I've been doing that more than I've been using Copics, actually. Um, now, that reminds me, while I have your undivided attention, if anybody here is a Copic person... We have recently added Copic markers to the website and we have got them at a very, very good price because I am wanting to no longer stock them. So, well, not at the moment. So that means that if you head over and have a look on the website, nataliemay.com.au, you will find a heading called Copic Markers um, and yeah have a bit of a look because there's some very 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 competitive prices in there all right so what I want to do this time is I'm going to go with a slightly smaller paintbrush because I got caught out last time didn't I so I'm going to go with a super tiny little paintbrush this time 
and I'm still taking the, I'll take the red from here. And I just find it so much easier to make this little puddle here and work from that. So then I can control what I've got. Now the cool thing here is my little berries. I just have to dot the color on, go back in, reload my brush and it's good to go. So for those of you just tuning in, welcome, welcome. I'm having a bit of a play here with some watercolors to make a couple of quick, quick little cards. Um, I actually, I could do this all day. This is so therapeutic. Isn't that what you normally do? This is what I do all day. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. <laughs> She's a smart ass. Um, but this is just super, super therapeutic. Coloring images with watercolors is my everything. Oops, where are we? About there. Okay, so I'm going to pop those aside to dry. All right, so here is the other. So these, this is my um, my stamp that I have designed. Um, hey, look, I could colour these as, and be succulents or they could be uh, flowers. They can be anything you want them to be. So what am I going to do today? I'm going to make them... That's a noisy bird. That's me. Um, I'm going to... I might do something in oranges. Let me just clean off my palette so I can dab off that colour there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right. Actually, I'd need to... If I put orange on that, I'm going to make brown because I've got green underneath it. So I'm just going to turn it around so I've got a nicer area to work on. I'm making a juicy little swatch in here, then wiping it off onto here. And then this is what I can control. Okay, I'm going to take this lovely colour, nice and juicy and wet, and do that. And I'm going to take this yellow over here and put it here. I'm going to mix them, to mix them together. So this is a, this is, um, like I mentioned before, I'm not working on watercolour paper. I am working on cardstock that I make cards out of. So I'm not using... You know how it dries is is going to be completely you know you have to be decisive you have to get in there and just commit to the color um and working fast so that i don't end up with brush strokes i want to end up with something that looks a little bit more effortless so putting the darker color on the outside like that i've got a decent amount of liquid on my brush And I'm just reloading these little spots here. Hello, Emma. And I'm making sure that I'm using enough liquid, but not too much. It's a fine balance. It's a balance. It's about making the, the colours work for you. You can control the water. It's not going to flood and saturate. You know, it's like when you're drying something with a heat gun. It's not going to burst into flames. You're a grown up. And I love, I, what I really love about watercolours is that, that the way that the colour pulls and, and um, just works in really quite nicely. The lighter yellow in the middle. And it takes practice. I mean, you, you can jump in and just give it a whirl and nail it the first time. I'm not one of those people. I like to practice. I love working on these little card fronts that I make, these little works of art, and I gift them in with my customer orders or I will, um, you know, send them out to a friend or pop them into my art journal or throw them in a cardboard box in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me bring that up to camera to show you how much water's on it. And you see those three colours do actually... You know, there is a bit of a difference there. So instead of turning them into succulents, I have turned them into flowers this time. And I'm going to pop that aside to air dry. So with this one here, this could be like a hanging garden or a... Uh, that looks like a fuchsia. It looks like a fuchsia. Thank you, yeah, Louise. Okay. It does. They're Maybe normally... that's where I was inspired. I was, I was hoping it was going to be like a fuchsia. So I want to now extend my line just by using a waterproof pen.
And for some reason, I had to stop talking and concentrate while I was doing that. Did you see that? Did your tongue go out? My, no, I wasn't. A tongue on the side of my mouth. Um, so what colour are fuchsias? Pink. Pink. Like fuchsias pinks are and... pink. So let's pull out the pinks. Yeah, sort of these sort of So colors. there's a pink there. Oh, that's quite a pink. And then we'll take one pink from over here. Hello, Karen Campbell. I will be your friend. Oh, right. Okay, I see where you're going here. I know what you're after, girl. So they're quite dark on mm. here. So what I want to do is as I'm colouring them, I can pull it out and make it a, a shade. So even though this is quite a strong colour, the more water you add, the more the pigment gets toned down. You can mix a couple of colours together. And I'm okay with, you know, colouring outside the lines because it's none of this is, is a perfect sport for me. And when they dry up, they look a little more creative, organic. And they usually have yellow stems. And they usually have yellow stems. All right. Well, you know way too much more about, or so much more about gardening <laughs> than I do, which is blatantly obvious. But in saying that, Louise and I were just saying yesterday how healthy Brenda looks, our plant in the front foyer. Miss Brenda looks very healthy. I haven't managed to kill her yet. So there we go. So this is from the Buds of May stamp set designed by me. So mixing these three pinks together when it dries is gonna look fantastic because it's gonna have all of these different shades. All of these lovely different shades of pink. So it's just taking a second. There's seriously no talent involved in doing this. It is nothing more than making smart choices with your colors. I, um, and, and using water. So for example, watercolors require water. I know, brainwave, but Quite often when I do the colouring class here in Adelaide, um, the girls get a bit complacent and find that the, you know, we find that the colours, it can, if you don't, I'll do one in a moment. I'll do an example for you where we do one with um, not enough water on the brush so I can show you how, what the difference is. All right, I'm gonna put that aside to dry. So I'm quickly gonna go back to my holly. And my holly requires a thinner paintbrush to do these stems and a thinner paintbrush to do the stems probably in a brown. Now, I'm just gonna, again, make a puddle. And I do have these lovely little Altenew paint brushes, watercolor brushes. And I don't want too much water. Because I'm working in such a fine area and that brush has seen a better day. Let's find the other one. That's a better brush. So now I'm able to get into these little fine lines and I'm totally colouring outside the lines, which is fine by me because, like I said, it's not perfect. And I don't know what colour these bits are supposed to be. So today, they've got like a brown wash. They do. They're not dead. Well, maybe they are. Maybe if it's come from my garden. But I've done like a really light, watery brown wash on it. I don't see, not so bad. Not so bad. She doubts me. And the way that I um, push it out is I'm just going to use water before it all soaks in to wash it out. Push that colour out. Because I don't want lines. I want it to be like a dirty wash. All right. So that's a super light brown. And the same thing on this one. Yes, I know Karen Louise thinks she's hysterical sometimes. So 
So these are just gonna, all this is gonna need is a, a sentiment, really. And I've got a, a super lovely, quick and easy um, Christmas card. Okay, so not fancy paper, just enough. All right, let me quickly show you what to do. What would happen if, I don't even, oh, I put the stamp block away. Oh, seriously, I put the stamp block away. Oh, no, here it is. Let's do it on this. So if we had a dry, more of a dry um, watercolour paint, I'll show you that what, what happens with that. So I'm just going to do this as a kind of a half-assed sort of effort. All right. So if I don't use enough water with my watercolours and I go into a, a dryish sort of pan, um, oh, it's really hard to do this the wrong way because my brain is so used to doing it. Yep, see, I did it right. I don't want to be, it's not a colouring in. Do it wrong. So, <laughs> yes. If I, so this is pretty much a dry pan, right? This one here. I've got nothing on my finger. So if I just go in here and try and grab that colour off of there, nothing happens. It looks a bit crappy. Okay. So if I do it again with purple. See how that looks like crap? Sorry, let me rephrase that. See how that looks awful? So that's where the difference is with the water. So while that's still a work in, while it's still wet, I can kind of get in here and reactivate it and make it look better. You do really want something quite juicy. So if I have it go here, I've got quite a puddle going on in here. And if I do it the right way and bring it up to camera to show you, it's quite, is that showing up on camera? Yeah. It's quite a juicy puddle. And I can build on that. I can go in and add another color. Now, there's no colour on my brush at all. This is just a wet brush now. And I can just spread that around before it dries. Okay? So, you, you have the power. You just have to practice it. And the difference is using a, a good quality set of watercolours versus... Um... Hey, Louise, someone's at the door, babe. Oh, it's only Jess. Um good set of watercolors versus a crappy set of watercolors okay so um and the colors that you mix together are going to make all the difference as well so you know i won't i'll make sure that everything is completely dry before i go into that next color there what's the matter jess just louise just louise hi everyone okay jessica's in the house all right so can you see how that works so good good quality watercolors are got to make a massive difference to how you create i honestly think that um i mean there's a reason why i don't stock cheap ones on in my online store because i'm just not going to recommend them that's what it comes down to i'm not going to sell you something that i wouldn't use myself all right so that's how that works okay so let's have a look let's do a little recap let's see what's going on here let's close that up Cl pop that not here um, okay, so here we go. We've got this one here. I will grab my trimmer. Where's my trimmer? Where's my little trimmer? Under, under what? Watercolours. Um, cubes. Under what? Oh, under the... Use some words, babe. Words. All right. Using my little crafter's companion trimmer, I am going to trim the bottom off of that. Okay, I really don't want to do anything else to that except for add a sentiment. 
So the sentiments that I have handy are the ones from me, Natalie May Scrapbooking, and I'm gonna go with, I've got a little block here, and this one, I've just picked up a random one. And this one says, we all make choices. So I'm just gonna stamp that there, okay? I love that font. Obviously, that's why I created it. Um, the Christmas one, I won't pop that sort of thing on. So I do love that that one could be like the hanging flowers. I actually quite like it like that. So I'm going to do this one. We've got some trust the timing of your life. Old ways won't open new doors. Change your thoughts and you'll change the world. Limited edition. Kind words cost nothing. Keep life simple. She hit... What's that one say? Work hard. Stay humble. I love that one. She had art on her mind. Make shit happen. So there's a whole heap of really cool phrases here that I absolutely... Here we go. I like this one. This will be the one. Test it. Good things come to those who hustle. Damn right they do. So there's two there. This is the one that I did with the Catherine Paula inks. So that looks fantastic. That's dried up still just as vibrant. It looks so cool. Um, no, the Catherine Paula inks are not 15% off. They are not part of the sale. They will not be on sale. But I can tell you this. The recommended retail price on every other website in, in Australia is up around the $115. Um, I'm, I've only got them for $90, okay? Just to give you the heads up on that, I have marked them down because they're a new product in my shop and um, I'm looking after you guys. Now, that is there, that is there. My, my two little holly, my Christmas cards are looking pretty good and I'm really, really happy with that. I'm gonna add a Christmas sentiment across here. It could be, I've put the Christmas stamp somewhere safe. Totally put it somewhere safe. Doesn't matter. There's a heap of Christmas stamp, um, sentiments on that set wherever I've put it. So that is how those cards will be finished off. But even if you use um, your Distress inks or your Distress Oxides to paint with, they work really, really well. Um, I mean, hey, with those, the bonus is you can take them straight off the, straight off the pad. Look at that color, bam, nailed it. Okay, and even better on watercolor card, this is just that, that lovely cardstock. So, um, so you certainly have options. Um, yeah, Jeanette, I never put inks and tools on special, babe, because they are essential things. Um, I, te I tempt you with, the things that I put on special are the, the things to tempt you with that you know, you'd need in your life, but they're not an essential item. <laughs> you know how it works. All right, so thank you very much to everyone for tuning in this afternoon. nataliemay.com.au. You'll get Christmas things 15% off today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Today only, stamps, dies, and stencils. Don't forget to have a look at our show specials category and also our show bundles. And treat yourself, have a bit of a scroll down and have a look at some of those other categories, such as the Copic markers, where they are alcohol markers at a fantastic price. You'll also find some pre-loved bits and pieces as well, stuff that I might use in demos. And we upload that, and I use those in classes. I update that section um, quite regularly, so make sure that you have a look at that. Um, I think that's it from me today. I will be back at 4.30 to do and a painting art journal page. I need to get some paint on these hands. I'm going to take some photos, upload all these little photos uh, to Facebook for you to have a bit of a look at and leak the products in. So have a great day, guys. Stay safe.
Kiss your kids, wash your hands, do the things. Chat soon.